Good day YouTube! This is Dave coming at you and as promised in previous vlogs today I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour and show of my RV, my motorcycle and some of the camping gear that I've brought together to make my trip this summer to northern Arizona much nicer for myself. So without further ado let's go have a look at some of the gear shall we? Alright first up this is the motorcycle that I've purchased to take me take along with me. This is a little Yamaha 225 single cylinder four stroke. It's a nice little bike. It's got enough room for me. As you'll notice, it has a nice little rack on the back on which I can put one of my favorite carryalls, the milk crate. This is my RV. This is a 1983 Jamie Motor Home. It's 19 and a half feet long. It is built on a one-ton Chevy Van Dually chassis. It has a 350 V8 engine with a carburetor. And it's in relatively decent shape considering its age. Around the back here, you'll notice that's our little generator compartment right there. Now this particular RV was the stripper model. It didn't come with a generator, although it's wired for one. Now here is our motorcycle rack that I bought and you'll notice that little uh, ramp off to the left that is supposed to be the loading ramp for the uh, rack however that loading ramp doesn't work very well it's too short and too steep fortunately I have a longer ramp that I can attach here to the bumper later that will allow me to load the motorcycle just fine one of the biggest problems is I have to be able to load and unload every piece of gear by myself if I'm going by myself now Let's have a look down here of the inside of the RV itself. First thing you run into in here is the door for the bathroom. This does have a full bathroom as far as an RV goes. You have a flush commode. You'll notice I've already started to load gear in here. And I also use the shower as part of my loading area. But the shower works. It's a decent little shower, but it's kind of small, so I very seldom use it. Because I have an outdoor shower I will show you later that is much more comfortable to use. It has a, a little mirror here, and it has a, full, it has a sink. So it's a very good functional little bathroom. Alright, we're looking at the back of the RV, and that would be the... Um, bed and dinette section and I never use the dinette so I usually keep the bed down and I usually use it as my general lounge and seating area and I have a TV tray that I eat off of. I also use the stove top to the left to place my laptop on while I'm using it simply because I use the TV tray for my mouse and keyboard and I have the laptop up on top of those little burner tops which keeps it elevated and allows air to flow through it and keeps it from overheating. Another little addition that I've done to the RV is I've added plugs such as this throughout and I've adapted all of my gear that runs off 12 volts such as the laptop's plug-in to plug into this so I can use my marine battery for power. Now looking at the back of the RV again Above the bed area we have a nice cabinet that goes all the way across and it joins in the center so this is one continuous cabinet from one side of the RV to the other and it holds a lot of gear. It's a good place to stash most of my or most of my food. My clothing I stash over here in this container and I also have my wardrobe right here. Most of that is my Renaissance gear. I use every, every bit of storage I can. That's a little microwave I've got tucked away in the corner. I use that when I'm using the generator or I'm lucky enough to be plugged into someone's house uh, circuit when I'm on the road. I don't usually use campgrounds. We have a small cabinet above the refrigerator here. And we have the refrigerator itself which runs off of 12 volts when you're driving, propane when you're not, or of course if you're lucky to be plugged in somewhere or in a campground or someone else's house, electricity. It has a nice little refrigerator and freezer unit and the freezer works relatively well. And this particular refrigerator gets me by pretty good and I supplement it by using ice chests occasionally. We have additional wardrobe uh, drawers down here that I use instead as tool drawers 
and we have a small cubby hole which I keep uh, jacks and other minor equipment inside. As I said before, we'll slowly pan around here so we don't give anybody a headache. We have the stove and oven. And I very seldom use the oven, but it makes a great pizza cooker. I'll tell you, that's one thing it's very good for. And we have the, the uh, cabinets and the sinks. And moving to the front of the vehicle, we have our... This is the over-the-cab bed, and I never use it. Not that I'm claustrophobic, I just don't like sleeping that so close to the ceiling. So, I often use this for storage. You can see my 10-foot folding ladder that I'll have in there, and my uh, that's my extra tent up on top. And I'll have this full of milk crates, full of goodies that I need, essentials and gear. You'll notice that I've also taken the passenger seat out of the RV. And the reason I did that was I saw that done by someone else in another video about their van. And not having the seat in there, you have a little extra room. And since that isn't level, I added a very small piece of wood underneath it. And I bolted that down to the actual bolt holes that used to hold the seat in. And I have a quick release on that lower red milk crate. And that's all bolted down together. I can stack up to four milk crates loaded with gear, tie them down, and I have a lot of extra room there. And in front of that, I still have room for additional gear. That's pretty much the interior of the RV. This is... We're back outside again, and I just thought I'd take a moment to show you my little generator. Now this is a suitcase type, is what they call it. It's relatively quiet, and it has a fairly good amount of power. Of course, it won't power an air conditioner, but I don't have one. However, it will power my microwave, my convection oven, my high-velocity fan, and in a pinch, it will charge my marine battery for me if I need to. Now, this little device is small enough to fit right into the generator compartment that was built into the RV. The generator compartment is wired, and I could actually do a little work on this and set the thing up with the proper exhaust and uh, wired into the RV as a full-time adaption, but I often use this generator for other projects where I'm out working where I don't have electricity. So I like it just fine the way it is. It's a very functional unit. It's by Genrad, and uh, I believe I paid about $500 for it new, and it's been worth every penny. This is my solar panel array. It is actually three solar panels that are mounted on a framework. And this particular framework has legs in the back that allows it to sit at about a 45 degree angle, which gets good sun. However, in my case, I've adapted it. I've padded the back frame, tied up the legs, and I have four big hooks on either corner. And I allow that to set the R this on top of the RV so that I get the maximum amount of sun during daylight hours. Now, this particular set is made to do 45 watts and... If you leave it attached to a trickle charge, it keeps the battery at a fairly constant rate. Uh, my battery is about three seasons old, and this will charge it up completely full in less than three days from almost a flat condition. However, again, if you're keeping it on a trickle charge, the battery never seems to get that low. Now, this particular uh, solar panel array is, uh, was sold to me by a group called Harbor Freight and on sale you can get them for as low as hundred and thirty nine dollars which i think is an outstanding value considering how much help it gives you when you're out camping so there you have it a brief tour of my rv some of the gear i'm taking with me and you'll get to see a lot more of it in use and different things i'll be doing as i travel it's hard to believe that after all of this work that i've had to do on my house and the rv and getting the motorcycle together etc etc but I'm finally down to less than two weeks before I get out of here. And boy, am I looking forward to it. We're already hitting over 100 degrees here in Phoenix. And although it still cools off rather nice in the evenings and it's not too bad yet, I can't wait to get out of here because I've been checking the weather reports. And where I'm going up north, we're staying in the 70s and maybe as high as 80 and down to a nice cool 45 or so degrees at night. Well, until next time. Happy RVing. Keep trucking out there. Bye now.